Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. This is the third part of soil classification topic. In part one, um, I already discussed on group of soil, then I explained the characteristic for each of soil. Uh, in part two, I have also discussed on the laboratory testing to be conducted prior classifying the soil. Now in part three, we are going to use the data obtained from laboratory testing and classify the soil based on some standard. The information obtained by both particle size analysis and ultimate limit test is then will be used for classification purpose. If you still remember, we need to carry out uh, two sets of stating. One is based on particle size, okay, particle size analysis, where you carry out sieve and may also carry out hydrometer test, okay. And then if you find out that you have a sufficient amount of fine grain soil, which let's say we say that more than 10 or more than 12% or so what, uh, we know that this, even a small amount of um, fine grain soil consists on your soil sample, it may able to influence the major behavior of that particular soil means that it will disturb the behavior of uh, the main type of soil. Okay, so we want to know what are uh, those 10% in that uh, particular soil sample. Then you have to carry out Arthur limit test. Okay, where in Arthur limit test, there's another two tests which is liquid limit test and also plastic limit test. So now the soil classification based on engineering characteristic specifically on geotechnical perspective are done uh, by unified soil classification system and also h2 system h2 is american association system for traffic and highway organization it means that uh, the, the first standard is opt for mainly for geotechnic okay and the second one is more on um, highway engineering Okay, and I will engineer. But again, to use these two standards, okay, to use these two standards, we need to have the data from those two sets of testing. It means that the data from safe, uh, from or from ultimate limits, liquid limit and plastic limit. Okay, to further classify your soil based on these two system. Okay, why only these two system? Okay, we actually have more than that. Okay, we have several more standards. Okay, to classify the soil. Uh, we also have a standard uh, for agriculture and also for many things but because we are under geotechnical course okay so we are focused on geotechnical standard and why we use this one also even though it is not mainly for geotechnic but this is actually for highway okay for information uh, when you're talking about highway i mean that for road construction sorry yeah, this is for road construction your road is consists of um four layers okay and the bottom layers is subgrade okay you have a few more layers here you have rope base or you have sub base i'm not sure which one comes first rope base or sub base and the upper layer is what we call as surface okay where you have wearing cost and binder cost okay this is the surface that you see on the road okay you see on the road Okay, while driving your car okay but whatever layer beneath here is the one that you are not you, you can't see it is a, like a foundation especially for this one this is um, considered as the foundations of your roots okay the foundation of your roots and what is actually this layer the subgrade layer is consists of 100 percent you can we can say that 100 percent of soil so when it comes to this standard we actually want to classify the soil for this purpose okay to um identify whether this layer okay this layer which is actually subgrade layer is suitable to be used as a foundations for road construction okay so we actually classify the type of soil for this layer so still when talking about soil it means that you're talking about geotechnic right and uh, we also have a British standard, Malaysian standard whatsoever, but it is most likely similar to USCS. Okay, so I'm going to only discuss these two standard, USCS and also H2 classification system. 
The original form of this system was proposed by Casa Grande in um, 1942 for airfield construction during World War II. And the system classified soil into two broad categories, okay, similar to previous discussion. Okay, They have a coarse grain and another one is fine grain. Okay. And um, if you're talking about coarse grain, it means that it's dominated by what? Gravel and also sand okay uh, in which that uh, less than 50 but part 50 percent particle passing number 200 it means that more than 50 percent retain on this one then you will consider that one is cost if you're talking about fine grain soil which is uh, it's either inorganic of uh, clay or silk or organic clay and silk okay this means by uh, or another one which is pit okay it means that more than 50 percent particle passing sieve number 200 so we are looking at the boundary of sieve number 200 so in us system the first thing first they divide the soil into two groups one is coarse grain or fine grain and how to differentiate that okay whether your sample is dominated by coarse or fine they're looking at sieve number 200 either more than 50 percent particle passing or more than 50 percent particle retain okay so here is retain on sieve number 200 this one is passing okay or the other way around okay less than 50 particle retain here so it means that more than 50% passing or more than 50% retain but less than 50% passing so it will become coarse or fine grain soil okay so you look at the sieve number the thing the things that you need to bear in your mind is you have to look at sieve number 200 and you check whether more than 50% passing or less than 50% passing if you're talking about passing if you're talking about retain then it should be the other way around so if more than 50 percent passing this is fine is less than 50 percent passing which is more than 50 percent retain this would be a group for coarse grain soil here are the general guidance of some information needed in uscs classification system it clearly shows that the first criteria to be considered is the material passing or retain on what on sieve number 200 or equivalent to um, 75 mic micrometer or 0.075 meter okay so why we said you have to look at sieve number 200 because sieve number 200 is the boundary of coarse and fine okay so if let's say you have sieve okay remember in part two we already discussed on sieve analysis and i also show you a video for further understanding okay let's say this is your sieve number 200 okay here is your sieve number 200 remember when you arrange the sieve you need to arrange from the big aperture the big opening okay and followed the bottom one is the small small opening okay so this is number 200 so what is actually number 200 is the boundary between coarse and also fine so here is for coarse and this one is for fine okay so this is the boundary okay anything that retain retain on sieve number 200 it means that it is belongs to coarse grain soil anything that passing on sieve number 200 means that it belongs to fine grain soil so that is the first thing that you need to know okay in addition to that i hope that at this point you already know when you're talking about cars it means that there's another two types of soil gravel and sand when you're talking about fine you have another two type of soil which is silt and clay okay if it's inorganic if it's organic okay remember for fine also it can be inorganic or organic inorganic means that you don't have organic matter organic means you have organic matter so it can be organic silt or organic clay if it has less than 75 percent organic matter if more than 75 percent organic matter then we call it as pit 
For proper classification, according to this system, some or all following uh, information is needed. Okay, so what you need is you need to know what is the percentage of gravel, okay, and what is the percentage of sand, and what is the percentage of fine, okay, a combination between silt and clay. So to know those things, okay, you have to refer to grain size distribution lab results. So it is actually from what? From sieve analysis. Okay. So gravel is whatever material that retain on sieve number four. Sand is whatever that passing number four but retain on sieve number two hundred. And for fine, definitely anything that passing sieve number two hundred. So imagine this again. This is your sieve. Okay. Let's say this is your number two hundred is here, and maybe here is number four. So you see that. Anything that retain here, okay, retain on sieve number four, this will be a gravel. Anything that passing sieve number four but retain on sieve number two hundred, this is sand. And anything passing sieve number two hundred, we have fine. But can you know? Is it clay or seed? No. From sieve, you have no idea whether this fine is clay or seed. You are not able to further identify it. So if let's say again, I say that you from from the sieve analysis testing, you find out there's a sufficient amount that passing sieve number two hundred, and again, let's consider it's more than ten percent. So you want to know whether it is clay or seeds, either clay or seeds. You need to carry out outer bird limit test and get these two results. You need to carry out outer bird limit test. So what is outer bird limit test? Liquid limit and plastic limit. Then you will get the PI. Okay, PI is equal to LL minus PL. Additional to that, you have CU and CC. Okay, what is the function of CU and CC? It's for grading purpose. Okay, either you want to further describe your course. Okay, coarse grain soil either well graded or poorly graded. So, either well graded sand or well graded gravel or poorly graded sand or poorly graded gravel. Okay, so this all the information needed. Okay, okay, in order for you to proceed, uh, classify your soil based on USCIS system. Okay, soil symbols, uh, plasticity, and grading characteristics are listed here. Okay, this is a soil symbols, okay, plasticity characteristic, and also gradation symbols. Okay, for example, okay, uh, before that, okay, uh, for gravel, the symbol uses G, sand, we use L, okay, silk, we use M. Why we don't put S? Because S is already, S is already taken by sand, okay, alright, and clay, C, okay, organic. O P T P T, and if you are talking about in terms of this is for plasticity, if you want to say that the soil has high plasticity, you are referring to liquid limit, alright, either high or low. Okay, more than fifty, high, so the symbol is H. Less than fifty percent liquid limit, it means that it's indicate low plasticity with the symbols of L. Okay, when talking about gradations, it means that this is for grading, right? And this grading is only a second criteria to be described for cost. Okay, this one is mainly for fine. Okay, so well graded, you use symbol W. Poorly graded, you use P. For example, okay, for example here, uh, if you find out that your sample is have some sand and also silt. So how to write it? Okay. Uh, S, we know that S is for sand. What is M? S, M is for silt, right? M for C, S for sand. So you look at the first letter. Anything you look at the first letter. So this is the first letter, this is the second letter. The first one means that consider as major type of soil and this one is the minor type. So your soil consists of most likely you have more sand. But 
it also have silk so when you read it you read it silty sand okay silty sand okay same thing also like this one the first letter is sand so you know that the type of soil is sand but in terms of you want to describe further about this sand okay it is well graded okay sc it means that what is the main is still sand but it has a minor of clay we call it clay sand right mh h is we know that h is also high but why it put is elastic okay elastic is actually for high also high plasticity okay it can be also put elastic okay okay this is the procedure for classification of soil so this is actually the um, example of a table or chart for uscs system you might see a different table different chart later from different reference book but it is actually give you the same information it's just that what you need to do is you need to really understand whatever information is given on each column and on each rows okay so what is your first step step one okay you need to read from column okay from column to column okay from column to column okay so we start with the first column so we start with the first column okay so the step one okay is to determine the percentage of a uh, particle retained or passing on sieve number 200 because we want to identify whether the soil sample is dominated by cause or fine so you have to look at this information and you need to check on sieve number 200 because of why remember sieve number 200 is the boundary between coarse and fine Okay, let's say from the first column, you know that it is coarse. So you don't have to further look at this part because to direct your answer later, you are moving to the next column, column number two, but you are focusing on the same area. So now you're just focused on this area. So your answer will be limited to these areas only. So look at the next column. Okay, so no more looking on this part. So the next column is to identify whether it is gravel or sand because you already know that it is coarse. So you want to know whether it is gravel or sand. So to identify whether it is gravel or sand, you have to refer to sieve number four because that is the boundary between gravel and also sand. Okay, again, let's say you know that it is sand. Okay, you know that from the information of the sieve analysis, you know that it is sand. It's more dominant sand. Maybe it has also a certain amount of gravel, but which one is higher in terms of the percentage? So that is the answer. So let's say your answer is sand. So you don't have to look at this part anymore. So your answer will not, okay, when you want to move the next column, okay, you are just focused on this area so your final answer will only limit to these four symbols okay these four symbols only okay so here what is the information here on the third column you want to know whether it has less than five percent spines or more than twelve percent spines so what is the fines fines it means that you have to refer back to sieve number 200 so you need to look at what what is the percentage passing sieve number 200 let's say the percentage passing number 200 is 28 percent so it is more than 10 percent right so now moving to the next column number four you don't have to look at this part so you only focus here can okay, i only focus here so now okay because it has fines 12% consider as sufficient amounts of fines to be identified whether that fines okay this fine is uh, clay or silk if you look at here if let's say you find out your answer is this one okay they don't even ask you about below a line or above a line because less than five we assume that it not sufficient amounts of 
fine even though it has five percent fine but it is not sufficient to influence the behavior of that particular soil okay so we want to look in terms of the grading because we already in the sand last last we know that it is sand but we just want to know whether in terms of its grading whether it's well graded or poorly graded but if let's say your answer is direct to here we want to know okay you look at the last one is either sm or sc so what is m it is sand with silk okay or sc it is sand the major components of that soil sample is sand but with clay so you have to refer to this okay so what is this this is the information that you can get from what from plasticity chart okay from plasticity chart okay you get this information from plasticity chart and what's other information needed is a liquid limit and also plasticity index value so what is this this is the parameters you need to get from Atterberg limit test it means that you have to carry out liquid limit and plastic limit then you calculate pi okay so you have the ll here pl here you have a line here anything above a line this will be considered as clay. Anything below A line, so this is your A line. Below A line, that will be M. So you have to refer on, so this is PI, PI, and also liquid limit information. Okay, that's all. So you need to really understand the information, okay, given on each column, each row to direct you for a correct answer. For the following three conditions, a dual symbol should be used. Okay, so we have another uh, things to be considered where it comes to borderline cases. Okay, where you need to have two symbols. Previously, we only have one set of symbol like SC, SW, G, M, or whatsoever. But now we might have two like SC, SW. Okay, so it have to be uh, lies with, within these three conditions it's not necessary to fulfill all the requirement at least one requirement that been fulfilled means that it lies on it can be considered as borderline cases so one is if if the soil contains similar fines and coarse grain fraction means that initially uh, from the first column you want to identify whether it's cost or fine then suddenly you find out that it is 50 percent cost and 50 percent fine you so you don't have anywhere to go then it come it it, it it slides under borderline cases or it has cost green soil within five to twelve percent if you remember from your uscs table uh, from the third column if i'm not mistaken it just gives you the options that either you have less than five or more than twelve so what happened if your fines is seven eight nine uh, six uh, ten eleven what happens so you don't have any way to go so it means that it will be again lies under borderline cases and the last one if the fine grain soil with limits within the shaded zone okay this shaded zone i don't show you yet but later you can see that uh, from the detailed plasticity chart there is a some shaded zone where that shaded zone is a uh, uh, pi between 4 and 7 and liquid limit between 12 and 25 so if the information is given to you from the laboratory testing sieve and also other limit test can be considered okay either the first second or third uh, information here so you are actually uh, within the borderline cases where your final answer will have two symbols Okay, let's understand this example okay uh, this is the information given okay you have everything particle passing number 200 a uh, 90% you have pi 11 and you also have uh, liquid limit 25 so go to the first one okay uh, passing number 200 is eight only eight percent okay okay we have a sieve here okay only if this is your sieve number 200 only eight percent here so another 92 percent is on top of that okay so we already know that it is definitely coarse okay you know it's coarse so you want to know whether it's gravel or sand on the next one because you know that it's coarse it's either gravel or sand so you say that number four let's say this is your number four 
the one that pass here is 90%. Okay, so whatever that retain here, 90 minus 8, here you have 82%. So um, on top here is 8%. So definitely you know that you have more sand than gravel. So it is sand. So now moving to the third one. Okay, you want to identify whether it less than 5% fines or more than 12% fines. So your fine is 8. So it's not here, not also here. So now you cannot to, to move to the next column you have no idea which one to go okay it wants to go to this part or this area so your final answer will be a combination between these four symbols so these two is quite similar because you're talking about sand whether and talking about the grading characteristic whether it's well graded or poorly graded and another two which is still sand but you're looking at the plasticity, which you know that that is has sufficient amounts of fines, okay, more than 12% of fine. So we want to know that 12% of fine, is it silk or clay? So whether it's silk or whether it's clay. So it can be combination between those four symbols. So it can be SWSM or SWSC or SPSM or SPSC. Okay, you cannot have um the same symbol from the same group so this is the first group this is the second group okay you cannot have like swsp no okay you have to decide first it is sw or sp if you know that it's w then you decide the second one whether it's sm or sc or the other way around all right so how to direct this one okay you, you at this one at this point you need to be a, a bit creative okay so let's say um, when you're talking about grading okay the first thing is talking about grading right you look at this one it means that you are talking about grading okay you're talking about grading for this one okay for this one, grading so yours I, okay even though you are not calculating the CU and CC because you don't have the information there but you know that it covers a wide range of sizes you have 8% of gravel, 82% um, of sand, and 8% of fine. So it covers a lot of sizes. So definitely it is a well graded. Okay. And when you want to check whether it is silk or clay, now you have to check on the plasticity chart. Okay. You need to be a bit creative here. So PI is 11. So let's say this is your PI. And LL is 25. Let's say it's here so this is your point it is above a line so it's above a line it is a clay so you have clay here so your final answer would be s w s c okay now moving to h2 Okay, uh, for H2, it uh, was based on the stability characteristic of soil when used as a road surface or with a thin asphalt pavement. The original purpose of this classification system is used for road construction. I'm, uh, as I already mentioned just now, it used for subgrade layer. What is subgrade layer? It's the bottom layer, okay, and acting as a foundation. It is a foundation of your, of your road, oh, sorry root layers okay root layers so uh, the required tests are SIF and Autobot limit similar to USCS you need to have the information from SIF and also maybe from Autobot limit and additional to USCS you need to also have a group index okay but the difference between that before I'm moving to the group index the difference between those uh, USCS and H2 uh, it divides soil into seven groups. A1 until A3 is under granular material. A4 until A7 will be silk clay material. But originally, we know that granular is actually similar to coarse. Okay? And silk clay material is your fine. It's just that for highway people, they don't say coarse material. They say granular material. Okay? So, initially, they still divide into two, coarse and fine. But they further divide under coarse, you have three more groups, A1, A2, and A3. And for silk clay material, you have another few more groups, 
F4, F5, A6 and A7. Okay, but if you remember on USCS, the boundary okay, is still at sieve number 200. Okay, but it's 50%. Okay, you're talking about similar equal ratio of cost and fine. But here, if less than 35% pass sieve number 200, it is actually goes to coarse grain soil or granular material and if more than 36% passive number 200 then it will become under fine or seed clay materials okay all right this is where i mentioned just now about gi value or group index okay to evaluate the quality of a soil a number called the group index is also incorporated with the groups and subgroups of the soil. So the group index is given by this equation. Okay, uh, but there's also some rules to be followed to determine the group index. Okay, let's say when you calculate the group index, you find out the value is negative. Okay, if you find out the value is negative, just take it as zero. And the GI value must be round off. You cannot answer, provide your answer of GI value in decimal point. So if let's say you got 1358.7, just round off 139. Okay. Alright. Uh, and no upper limit for group index. Uh, and you can use the partial GI for PI when calculate the GI belong to group A to 6 to and A to 7. But this is okay. That would be uh uh, self uh, instruct you later okay but look at the gi equations here so you have f200 it means that what is the percentage passing sieve number 200 so you use that percentage value if you say that 80 so you will be 80 okay ll is liquid limit bi is basis in that same thing used in percentage don't convert to decimal if the liquid limit given 70 use 70 if pi say 35 use 35 Okay, and you may ask, how come it become negative? Okay, negative if let's say you have your your sample has more cost. Let's say the percentage passing sieve number two hundred only twenty percent. So if twenty minus thirty five, definitely you got negative, right? So negative, just take as zero. So what actually GI give to you? Okay, read here. In general, the rating for a pavement subgrade is inversely proportional to group index, which means that if your group index is higher, okay, if the GI value is higher, means that it is not good. Okay, the soil is not good to serve as subgrade layer because of why if GI higher, it means that you have higher fines, you have higher liquid limit, you also have higher passive index, which means that your soil is wet. Okay, so GI is inversely proportional. Okay, if you got lesser GI value, it shows that your material is coarse. If it has higher, it means that your material is more to fine green soil. To classify the soil according uh, to table H2, the test data are applied from left to right. Same like you see as you read from left to right, rows by rows, okay? From top to bottom. Okay, so this is the example for a table for granular material. Okay, you have A1, A2, and A3. Okay, and you also have uh, a table for seed clay material, which is under group A4, A5, A6, and A7. So, again, you might see a different table, different charts from different reference books, but what you need to know is it almost gives you the same information. Your task is to understand the information given on each column on each row okay okay let's look at the example okay uh, this is the information given passing number 286 liquid limit 70 and pi 32 so uh, if this is your sieve i always do this because just to make sure that you understand this one better and also you can also use this one to to to, to make yourself clear Okay, much clear about this. So, passing number 286, wow, got a lot of fine particles. So, what is the percentage retain? Means that only 14% are right. All together should be 100%. So, clearly we know that it is actually more fine than cost. So, it is fine. That's the reason why I just show you a table corresponding to fines. Okay, you have A4, A5, A6, and 7. Okay, same thing like USS. Move one by one okay look at oh sorry 
you cannot look column by column because each column given you actually the group of your soil so you need to go rows by rows okay go from here from top to bottom so let's look at here first there's no information here so move to here no information also so move to here okay, if you look if you look at here all group a4 a5 a6 and 7 give you the same informations why because it's clear if you want to be in this group the minimum amounts of uh, particle passing must be 36 if less than that it will become cost material all right so you cannot still you cannot identify the groups okay either a4 a5 a6 and 7 okay now move to next liquid limit okay yours liquid limit is 70 percent okay so a4 and a6 give you the same thing which is to be in these two groups the maximum liquid limit must be 70 maximum cannot more than seven uh, sorry 40 cannot more than 40 but your liquid limit is 70 so definitely you cannot satisfy this so you only left with this one because for a5 and a6 they say that minimum to be in this group is liquid limit 41 which is it satisfies to whatever data you give so you know that uh you cannot have or why I already cancel this one. Suppose I cancel this one first. It's okay. Okay. Now you you only have two choice. Okay. This one still right. Okay. Still right. Okay. You left with two choice. You only have A5 and A7. So, okay. Now moving to. Uh, so you don't have to look at this one. Don't have to look at this one. Okay. Now moving to plasticity index. Your plasticity index is 32. So if you're talking about A5 here. To be in this group maximum 10 more than 10 cannot your study true so here is yes so now you can cancel a5 so you're left with a7 only so now you have a7 oh but for a7 it further sub it into a75 and a7c just to make your life difficult okay so read here for A75, PI must be less than liquid limit minus 30. So, your liquid limit is 70 minus 30 is equal to 40. Your PI is 32. So, 32 is still is, yeah, 40, is lesser than 40. So, which one? A75 or A76? We know that it is supposedly A75 because 32 less than 40, PI is less than liquid limit minus 40. So, you have A75. Okay, so this is your final answer. A75. And what happens to this in bracket 33? That 33 is your GI value. So you have to calculate your GI here. Okay, just calculate your GI. Put everything. This one is 86. Okay, liquid limit is 70. PI, again 86. This is PI is 32. Then you got 33.47. Remember, just round off your value to 33 so a75 33 so look at the informations given here from the last call last rows the general subgrade rating that is what you want to know okay so you look at here it's a fair to poor which means that your soil material is poor to be served as a subgrade layer okay means that a for for, for the sample that you have it is um group under a75 with the group index 33 quite high which means that it is fine grain so has too much fine has high plasticity okay high plasticity here it is a wet it is not good to serve as subgrade layer that's all that's the reason why the rating given here is from fair fair to poor all right okay so i hope that you can understand Okay, those uh, three examples that we already discussed just now from USCS. Okay, you have the normal example. You also have the borderline cases example. And for H2, you have one example. Okay, so I hope that from those examples that we already discussed, okay, based on those two systems, which is UCSS and H2, it's easier for you to uh, classify the soil based on those two systems. With that, thank you very much. So we end the lecture for this topic.
Okay, topic of soil classifications. We have part, we already discussed from part one until part three. So we are finished and everything here. With that, thank you and see you later.